holder of masochism. In any city, in any country, go into any mental institution or halfway house you can get into. As soon as you enter through the double doors, stop. Realize your intention of finding the holder of masochism, then approach the front desk. Do not ask anything and wait for her to look at you. She will look at you with a face bearing help and trust. As quickly as she looked at you, she will turn her head down and continue with her work. Anything that you say will be interrupted by her, so just make a quick gasp, and then she will say, I know who you are looking for. I cannot help you. Then wait five seconds and barge behind the table. You need to have an intention to do this, though. Look for a large drawer on the top left of her desk. It is the confiscation drawer. You will reach in and find a razor. Stand before her and make a large cut on the top part of your forearm. Make any reaction you want, as long as you make the cut deep enough to gush blood. She will watch as you do so, observing as a child would watch their parents. She will then turn around and grab a key off of the wall. The number is on the key. This will confuse you, as she has offered you a key to the person you want to find. The key is rusty and chipped at the grip, as the others are polished and shine with pride. Head up the stairs and look for the room. When you find the room, the door is already open. It is only cracked ajar, so simply step back and kick the door with all your might. The door should swing with force and power, and the door handles lodge into the weak and decrepit wall. Rapidly looking around, all you will see is a man on a bed, shaking and convulsing violently. There are some things on the shelf beside him, but pay no attention. The man will look very burnt from head to toe, and possesses no eyes, nose, or ears. Even though he is missing these parts of his face, he can hear, smell, and especially see you. The first glimpse he catches of you, he will stop shaking and lie there calmly. You must walk up to him, kneel down, and look where his eyes should be. Yet actually are. You will ask only one question. Do they feed of our pain? Calmly, he will point to the shelf. On the shelf lies a propane torch, a pair of pliers, and a small piece of metal in their grasp. If you had not read this, you would not know what to do, and the man would strangle you, as your last dying vision would be of what he used to look like. You will take the propane torch, turn the knob, and light the piece of metal within the pliers until it is white hot. He will then turn over on his bed, revealing an ink template of what he wants you to burn onto his back. You must burn this all onto his back and miss nothing. If you stop burning or you miss a part, he will then turn the propane torch onto your face. After you are finished, give him the tools and face your back to him. You will feel his hand go gently across your back, and then feel your shirt burn away and turn to ashes. His hand will brush off the ashes, and then proceed to burn into your back, from a template that suddenly and mysteriously appeared on your back the moment you entered the building. You can also make any reaction you want, for it pleases and entrances him. 
but do not jump away in pain or refuse to have him burn this demonic insignia in your back or he will do it with a knife and cut you deeper than you would have ever imagined. Just let him finish. Then stand up, blow him a kiss, and walk down to the front desk. From there, you will ask the woman that you want your razor back. She will hand it to you, and you will walk out to the mental institute, noticing your cut has been stitched up. You leave the mental institution with a curse. All pain to you is pleasurable and addictive. The key and the razor are object 111 of 538. The only way to remove the curse is to remove your heart and replace it with the key.